exactly what we want to do by by our podcast, sure. by Real Deal, all of those things. You just got to put them out in the world. And and you had mentioned that too, community. Community is so big to me because we we just all want to keep expanding that. The car community, all, all of these different things so that everyone feels like it's something they can come into, mm-hmm. you know, and they have that opportunity to, not that it's this exclusive club right, that, right. No, that everyone's too good for everyone else. And, and, and that's not and the case. so many times you show up as a newbie into whatever it's going to yeah. be. And if you have a negative experience, right. Then you think everyone's like that. Then you, yeah, they're, they're all assholes <laughs> yep. and you don't yeah. realize that. No, yep. you just unfortunately picked the, the worst r- guy, know, the, wrong you know, the wrong guy to talk to or, or woman, yeah. but, but the wrong yeah. person, let's put it that yeah. way, um, uh, to associate with. And you yeah. got this whole different impression of what's really going on here when right. in fact, that's not what's going on here yeah. at all. Hey, welcome to Car Guy Confessions, brought to you by ARP. I'm Jeff Smith. This is my car buddy, Cam Benzie, and car builder, Steve Strope. And we're going to tell you some stories. So welcome to another episode of Car Guy Confessions with Jeff Smith, brought to you by our friends ARP and ARP-Bolts. Did I get that right? ARP-Bolts.com. Yes. So we have a very special program today. I got a couple people here who we have never actually met, but we've raced. We've We've raced before at the same we event. I will, I will get to that. Yeah. Ooh, cool. And so, <laughs> and so we, have, we have Teresa Contreras, yep. correct? And Jane Thurman. Yes. And so we're going to, we're just going to dive into this thing, right? It's like, so, um, my first question is, and we'll get, I, I think we'll, we'll, well, first of all, the energy level is going to be real high here today. <laughs> so, so just be prepared for that. So, because Jason says he may regret this, right? <laughs> I may regret this. It's already off to a great start. So anyway, how did you guys get connected? Because your background is off-road racing and building trucks, correct? With yeah. your family, right? Yeah. And you built a, a, a company around that. Yep. Your, your, your parents actually started it, correct? Yes. Yeah. yeah. And then your background with your husband, Greg, yes. is building Corvettes, correct. a lot of stuff. And, and, and our road. connection is autocross racing yes. from, from the run to the coast. I was oh, there too. Wow. I was there with okay. my Chevelle. Okay. So, um, but so we have we have two disparate, you know. Yeah. Connect- so how did the connection? I think that's happen? why we work so well together. Yeah, it's that yeah. unlikely combination <laughs> like chocolate and peanut butter. Yeah. <laughs> you got my chocolate, chocolate, my <laughs> yeah, peanut butter, yeah, right? Yeah, totally. So how did that connection happen? How you know? Tell us about that. Well, I think it started with one of our friends. Um, first, yes. for it kind of, we intertwined, I think, a little bit along the way. Yeah. But I think our real connection started with Jesse Combs. Okay. So yeah. that's kind of where, you know, I feel like she's like that connector that really... Uh-huh integrated a lot of different things so let's talk a little bit about jesse yeah because totally. because there, there's that's the connection correct yes, okay definitely. okay and then because then you guys created a, you created a website or you both did the we website now have that a, was we now have a podcast together right. so jesse and i did and then now jane and i do now yes yeah the the, the website that has that has jesse on it that was the Get what it's well, called. No, right. that's the nonprofit. <laughs> the non- I know. The, no- the non so You do a lot things. of stuff. You got, a, you got a lot of irons in the fire. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about Jessie because there may be viewers who don't know who she is. Yeah. Or was. Totally. So um, yeah. Jessie Combs actually uh, left this earth in 2019 as the fastest woman on earth um, in a jet fueled vehicle f106 f106 Six thank fuselage you that was that was built as a land speed car yeah so start out as a jet fighter u.s yes, air force yes, jet fighter yes. and and because my dad was a pilot in marine corps so yeah. i know a little bit about aircraft awesome and so they basically created uh, a land speed car out of an f106 i believe it was a 106 yeah fuselage and then you want to split like the wheels and stuff because a lot of people like start to think about it but just With, the way you know, the no shape wings of it. no wings they no took wings, the wings right, off yeah. and then created a chassis they basically built a chassis and then hung the sheet metal around it yeah to create essentially a streamliner yeah. 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 So so basically they did have a failure with one of one of the wheels. Um and so again she left this earth as the fastest woman on earth. Mm. Um but I mean with us, you know, she was a uh she was a force to be reckoned with when she was here on right. earth and right. still to me after, you know. And and, and more so uh, among the many accomplishments was in fact she was a pretty 
fantastic welder too, correct? Yes. And yes. fabricator. Yep. So, and that's what really started her career, correct? Yep. It yeah. really did. So she went to Wyo Tech. Mm -hmm. um, so technical school that she went there for like, um, basically for, you know, paint and body, for welding, for, uh, she even did upholstery too as well. Um, and she had a, a vehicle that actually went to SEMA and then she started Extreme 4x4. She started doing things like that. So you could see her on TV, mm -hmm. um, All Girls Garage. You know, right. so a lot of people right. really knew of her because over she Holland. was... Overhauling. Overhauling, yeah. too, right. as well. Yeah. Mythbusters. Mythbusters. Yeah. Um, so she really was a woman that loved to... She loved to just dig right in and, mm -hmm. and create and do things and understand how to do them. You know, right, like right. you said, she's a good welder, um, fabricator, fabricator, love yeah. to go yeah. fast, um, yeah. you know? And so uh, how I met her, I guess how that story would start first is how I kind of met her. And um, <clears throat> it started and is now the 10 year anniversary of the all female build. So we actually had- That was at SEMA, correct? Yep, yeah. the first uh, all female SEMA build in uh, 2012, because now 22, right? Yeah. Um, and wow, so- yeah, and so she actually, we were doing the paint and body part of it at our shop, our family business, um, and so Jesse had come that day, and it was kind of like, I, I actually did not know who she was or anything like that, so she kind of popped in like, hey guys, what's up, you know, and I, and I tell people like, tell it like that because that's how she was. She mm -hmm. was always mm -hmm. this like bright energy, you know, that came in the room and stuff and you could always like feel it, you know, and that's just, that was her. Um, so she was like, Hey, what's up? And we're like, can you hold this bumper? Can you help us right now? <laughs> you know, we're just like, <laughs> no, we get have, in here. We, we need stuff to do here. We <laughs> yeah. got to get this done. Yeah. So, you know, she came in and did that. And then she looked over and uh, we had all of our motorcycles there because it was our shop. And she looked at one and she's like, whose bike is that? And I was like, Oh, it's mine. Mm -hmm. She's like, do you want to go riding? And like, that was the beginning of our relationship. You okay. know, right. we start riding motorcycles. Um, that was just something we love to do. We love to go fast. Um, her thing was always like, oh, I like you. You can keep up with me. You know, <laughs> that, that was a big thing to her, obviously. Oh, yeah. I mean, oh, yeah. you know, sure. she was like, she'd leave people sometimes. People were like, I don't like riding with her. I'm like, well, yeah. you just got to keep up. You got to travel on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and then so Jesse and I started uh, building motorcycles we started Real Deal Revolution. So what that was, um, it was actually a nonprofit. And what we did is we wanted to expand the idea of women in skilled trades, you know? Like okay. they were already there and we knew that. Right. And we wanted to showcase women similar to us that to showcase that to the rest of the world, sure, you know? And, and go out and teach other women that. So our idea was it's, to go- it's really hard for- girls and women to get into it because nobody takes them seriously, right? Yes. 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 Yeah. It's that part. And it's also the intimidation factor of tools, right. of welders, right. of these things. Because I'm, you don't, because it's not a normal thing for they're a, not a around woman it. or a young girl to pick up a wrench. And totally. well, I have a, I have an eight year old granddaughter Aww, who is very much a girly girl that. and crazy grandpa, yeah. whether, whether my daughter likes it or not, yeah. it, she's going to be exposed to this. So, yes. So yeah, yes, in fact, she you. just she just saw my hot rod, my '65 El Camino, for yeah. the first time awesome. two weeks ago, and she was it. like, oh, you know, and hugged the car. So we Good. had to have a just, you know, <laughs> which was it. I was fine with, but I have to I explain to her about car shows, and yeah. you can't do that. <laughs> you can't do that to everyone's my, car. They're not gonna like that. <laughs> my name is Uppa because she, when she was a baby, she couldn't pronounce Grandpa, so it came out Uppa. So is this is, it's it. Uppa's car? You can do whatever you want with Uppa's car. Right. Uppa's fine with it because what you don't realize yet is. You know, I, I love these T-shirts that say, um, you, you can't tell me what to do. And then in very small letters, only my granddaughter can tell me that. Aww. So she <laughs> has that it. kind of deal. So love I want to do that because, I love because that. you know, and she may not choose that. Her mother didn't choose to do anything sure. involved with that. But that, and that's fine. Sure. But to make the opportunity there where it's like, well, that's this is exactly fun. It. Turning wrenches and building stuff is fun. It isn't yeah. that a great word, opportunity. Yeah. I love that. Right. And, and that's all we were doing is, is creating that moment sure. that people have that because yeah. maybe they didn't grow up around cars. And, you know, and uh, you hear a no lot of stories. No family members were involved with yeah, that. Yeah, you right. hear a lot of stories like that where, where you know, women are in high school later and they're like, I don't know, I just got around it and wanted to take auto shop class or something. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so it, it's just Back when there you. was auto shop was class. Just right? say, Thank you. Right. No, it's, they they right. don't even offer that anymore. They don't. They don't. Yeah. But they don't. Hopefully. Which is sad, you know, yeah. and, we, and it's a real crime. 
Yeah. So. And, and actually that's something else. Uh, my sister and I do, we're part of something called, um, AXC. It's the Alex Exidius and Peach Purse Center for Automotive Arts. Okay. It is a, uh, auto, basically that's what it is. We're giving auto shop to, and it's free or scholarship based okay. to local people. And it's and kind of invitational, correct? It, well, it, and that's why you I say show scholarship. A skill level? Okay. Be, no, it, it's basically, um, you come in, we ask for an essay. Okay. So we want them to be committed to the class, mm -hmm. to them wanting to learn. So we don't yeah. just want them to take it for credits. Right. We want them to take right. it because they're interested in doing it. I have so. a fun story because I was in auto shop class. I, I'll, I'll admit how old I am here. This was 1970. <laughs> I was 16 years old. And my auto shop teacher, you know, I, I read in Hot Rod Magazine where there was this AAA, uh, the troubleshooting contest that they used to sponsor. And, and I, I read about this, like, well, this is so cool because it's for right. high school kids, right? It's like, we can do this. I went in there, I showed it to my instructor, and I said, let's do this. No. And I was like, what, what do you mean? No, right. this, this is so much, this will be very cool, and, and it's an opportunity for learning, and blah, 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 blah. No, no. <laughs> uh, what part of no don't you understand? And it wasn't until much later I realized, because I actually, as the editor of CarCraft, we went to a AAA, AAA contest and competed, mm -hmm. you know, against the kids, but not really against them, obviously. Yeah. We were guests. And we got our butts kicked. <laughs> and, and people actually asked, why are you going? Because they're going to kick your ass. See, it's okay because it'll be fun. Yeah. And what I learned was there was two tiers to this whole comp, 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 competition thing. Okay. There's the kids, which is what you expect. Then there's another level for the instructors. And my high school teacher knew this is going to be a lot of work for me. So I don't want any part of this. Right. <laughs> Right. That's what it was really about. I was like probably oh, 35 man. years old before I figured that out, you know, right. and it's like, oh, man. what a lazy yeah. SOP, right? Yeah. You know? It disappoints so, you really, huh? Yeah. I know. And then, and I then know. because it quickly figured out, I said, so there's all these instructors in this room. And I said, yeah. so I wanted one guy to start talking to him. I said, so there's probably hitters in this room. And there's like first timers. He goes, yeah, I'm a first timer. I go, oh, well, good that you're here. That's great. First yeah. time. Yeah. And I said, so the hitters, he goes, yeah, those four guys over there, they've won every contest for the mm. last 20 years. Oh. And these guys are hitters. And wow. so I, and he goes, <laughs> you should go talk to them because yeah. we're just, we're here to learn. You know, yeah. we know we don't have a chance of winning. It's going to be one of those four guys. Yeah. And, and, and their kids were, and this was back when they were doing Chrysler 2.2 front wheel, front wheel drive cars, like the little K car things. And, uh, and one of the instructors finally told me, he says, yeah, we can, we can actually make these things run when they're cold on one cylinder. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> so he would really go down and, and get parts that they, the instructor, the, 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 mechanics had were fixing cars they would go there almost every week and get broken parts save your broken parts i'll bring right. it back and right. and they talked the dealership into giving them a car that he would then cool. infect and then yeah. time the kids on how fast they could fix it awesome and these oh, kids were wow. amazing so so love wow. it but you gotta be resourceful and you need someone that has passion about what they're exactly. doing i mean yeah. exactly. obviously yes that and, and that's really where axc comes from is that uh, you know, there was, you know, all of us on the board are like that, you know, we want everyone coming into right. it to be the same way. We want the instructors to be exactly like yeah, that because yeah. why are you there if you don't want right. to be here? Because I was, in, I took uh, Votech <laughs> for, I took Votech school for a year because I thought I yeah. wanted to be a mechanic until I learned that I would probably starve if I ever tried to stay as a mechanic. <laughs> so I decided maybe I'll There's try writing because I'm better at that. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, so it turned out there were like three guys in my class of like 20 that were really motivated to learn. And the rest of them were just drones. I don't know sure. why they were even there. You know, you know? and it's like, That's why are you here? That's the rest of the world too, yeah. come on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. There, so, there's so. different percentages of, of the population out there. Right, and, right, so <laughs> what's the, then the connection was Jesse. So yes. you met Jesse yes. at some point? So, yeah, my son actually, um, the first time I met Jesse was at an event, an off-road event, and she and I sat across the table at dinner uh -huh. and became fast friends. And I actually did some writing for K&N. I was a oh. motorsports lifestyle journalist. Really? Yes. Excellent. Yes, Excellent. published about 75 times. Yeah. Uh, but I was writing an article on Jesse, and uh, I said, hey, can I come to the shop and you know, what are you building? What do we show me around? Let's, let's talk. Mm -hmm. And, um, Teresa came in and she was, I think, what were you doing? You were bringing something. Well, we were working on the RNT. Yeah, yeah. We were just working on it. So I, I came yeah, to work that day. Yeah. And K&N was actually helping to sponsor yes. the bike. So okay. it was yeah. a perfect opportunity perfect opportunity for me to get to know Teresa a little yeah. bit more and and it just kind of built and from there built from yeah. There. yeah yeah and yeah. and I learned all about the um real deal revolution and I wanted to be a part of that mm -hmm. I thought wow women's empowerment I had gone through my own kind of 
you know, evolution with learning how to race at an adult age. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it was, it just kind of snowballed after that. Hey, we'd like to thank our sponsor, ARP-Bolts.com. We got a fantastic little backdrop here. They make it an outstanding series of bolts, almost anything you would need for engines, chassis, things like that. In fact, we were at lunch today, and a guy asked you about the, the, the bolt on the back of your shirt, and it was, and, it was really, and I said, well, it's really about a head bolt. They neck the, 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 the stem down of the bolt on a short, small block Chevy head bolt, so the clamp load is even across three different head bolt lengths on a small block Chevy. And, uh, you know, so that, that's the kind of technology that you get out of sure. ARP. And uh, we, we've all got stories on all that right. stuff. Well, but, for a uh, translation of what he said, call ARPbolts.com. <laughs> <laughs> but, but the message is that you can't get any better than that. No, you so cannot. There nope. you go. Nope. Excellent. And then just check them out at ARP-bolts.com. We'd like to thank our friends at InTheGarageMedia.com. They have three fantastic magazines. They've got Classic Truck Performance. They have Modern Rotting and my favorite, All Chevy Performance, with Nick, my buddy Nick, oh, you're the so editor. Biased. So biased. Yes, of course. Yes. But uh, they're doing print media, which yes. is, uh, of course, our favorite. So, uh, in color magazine. and everything. In color and everything. Yes. And, and you can get your, your car on the cover of one of those books, right. which is right. a fun no, deal. A Great yeah. tech. You Great tech. By you you know, not always written by me, but yeah. People. Yeah. Not yeah. always written by me. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Just so pick it up and read it. at yes. InTheGarageMedia.com, and uh, they're our friends, and uh, they will thank you. Because autocross was a big part of this whole thing, too, with you, correct? Well, with yes, your, with it your was. <laughs> yes, it was. Yeah, because that, that's our connection, was, yes. was, the, was the race at the run, to the run to the coast. Yes, and that was the first race. That was that your I, first race? That was my first race. Yeah. And so if cool. you recall, I didn't have a clue of what I was doing. <laughs> I had was, no was idea. It, was it the early Corvette, too, the 64? The 64. Yeah, and yeah the she, red And, red and red that car. was a show car at the time. Okay. And okay. it wasn't it's still kind of it. Well, yes, it's a little bit showier now. But it was just, it was... You know, just a dusting car, mm. right? And so we. But you got to start somewhere. Yes, right. and it was our chassis builder that said, "Come to this run to the coast." And uh, I tried it, and I thought that was. Oh, I'm like, this is kind of fun. You know, you can do donuts in because cars and not get you know. Yeah, because it's not fast. It's it. fast yeah. enough that it's exciting, but not yes. fast if you're going to get hurt. There's nothing to hit. Right. You know, yeah. you'd have right. to work really hard to break the car. Yes. So yeah, yeah it's a great way to well, learn. Well, I and tried that. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it does happen. I've done that. <laughs> but that was ultimately what kind of spawned, you know, wanting to be good at this. Uh -huh. I had to, I have to work at, at being yeah. good at anything I do. I, well, I mean, I it's, it's all do. about, yeah, we all really well, do. Sure. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I'm just saying, I'm not naturally gifted like some of these folks. Well, you know, I, a long <laughs> like, time ago, uh, I had an opportunity to, to, you know, because I was the editor of Hot Rod Magazine back then, but it was a deal where I had a chance to have dinner with like a couple of famous race cars, race car drivers. And, uh, and, you know, I asked him, I said, you know, the first generation kids coming up, is this, is this like, like, is it built in their DNA? And they go, no. It's just oh. you put them behind, you know, dad yeah. put them behind a wheel before they could walk. Yeah. And okay. so they've been behind it's the, the wheel years of practice. their entire yeah. life, yeah. you know, racing everything that they could possibly yep. could. And it was like, yeah. duh. It's like right? second nature yeah. then right. after a while. Practice. Right. It's literally practice. Right. Right. Yeah. Because right. I got involved with Autocross <laughs> with um, a friend of mine, Dan Livesey, and another friend, Dean oh, Dodge. I know you know, yeah, Dan? I know Dan? You know Dan? Yeah. yeah. And yeah. his blue Corvette. And, and uh, what happened was, uh, it's a sh well, we won't get into all that, but, <laughs> but they offered to let me drive the car. And I'm thinking, why? Because we were running Pro Solo at the time. Okay. This was back in the late 80s and um, early 90s. And it was, they had an, he, Dan had an 82 Corvette that was very fast. It was, a, it was a championship winning car. And it's like, why do you want me to drive the car? Why, why a second driver? Well, I, I learned after a second race, I figured it out. I was a designated tire warmer. Because oh. <laughs> they wouldn't let you warm the nice. car up and or warm the brakes up, yeah. but if you have a second driver, put uh, me in the car right. first, and okay. then when he jumps in, <laughs> yeah, the tires are warm, <laughs> the motors are warm, the brakes are warm, and our yeah. main competitor <laughs> threw a fit, right, and protested us every race and said this is not legal. And SCCA said, "Well, get a second driver," and he went, "No, I don't want one." They said, "Well, then." tough yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. live with it yeah. and so it, but that was my introduction to it and and the more I drove the better I got right yep. you know I only beat Dan once huh. in two years and That's he sold the car the next day <laughs> 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 but it was the car was really already for sale you know and and I still to this day it's like damn we need to build another car this was a lot of fun you know because oh, now yeah. I've got more time to do it but now yeah. I don't live in the 
state anymore, so it makes right, it more left. difficult. I left. I <laughs> bailed left. out. I bailed out. <laughs> so, so yeah. So you, your your husband started building cars. So you've been around a your whole long time since ago. you've met yeah. him, and that yes. was that was the connection that got it all going. Yes. Yeah. 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 The first really car cool. that he built was for my twenty first birthday, and it happened to be a sixty eight convertible Corvette. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. But we didn't race that. That I just drove to the beach, college. <laughs> <laughs> so that was kind of fun. Yeah. So then, so the connection through you was Jesse, and yeah. then from there, you guys have started a podcast, right? Just recently? Yep, just recently, yes. yeah. yeah. And it was kind of like that, you know, that different dynamic, like what you're saying, like she loves, you know, street and on-road. I love, mm -hmm. you know, desert and off-road. And Yeah, because those things are about as far apart right? as you can get, right? Yeah. <laughs> but but, but the you, idea is, yeah, you're still going fast, right? Exactly, going fast. and you're still, you're still understanding, yeah. yeah, like yeah. Your, your traction, you know, gripping to certain terrains, how that changes, like yep. you said, like, you know, warming things up, all, all of those things still kind of come into play. You just yeah. have to understand them, you know? So, right. yeah. Right. Yeah. So it's been fun. I mean, that's, that's the whole idea is that we're kind of sharing both worlds a little bit to everyone out there, you yeah. know, and, and really about us. And, and again, that story kind of where you started, why we even got into this, you know, like, right. or, or how we got into this a little bit, like with Jesse and things like that. So, you know, it all, all these people, it's all these connections and, and where we come yes. from, of, you know, right. And that right? is, isn't that the best part of it? Yeah, I mean, yeah. you know, at first I, I did the job. I got the job. I started with car magazines and stuff. And, and it was because I was interested in the subject matter. Yeah. But, but stepping back now after, after 40 some odd years, it, it, the machines are still interesting and still, I'm mean, cause I'm an engine yes. builder and I really love the tech, but it's really the people that I've met, you know, Car yeah. people and are cool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they and, are. And, and, and That's my family. You yes, know, absolutely. It's, it's, absolutely. You get it and you can connect with them in a certain way and you get it. Like I just came from Dubai and I went all the way over there, motorcycle and car truck. I connected with them like not totally like we're all best friends because we're talking really? about cars and really? motorcycles. It was awesome. Really? It was so good. So uh, how was that? Because that I, was amazing. Was it an amazing? Oh trip? gosh, yeah. 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 So I mean, you go over there and it's such it, it's it's this different you know futuristic that your their idea of you know they have the museum of the future you know and and really? what they're promoting out there you know and and everything's like very clean and like amazing <laughs> like okay. so it's definitely a different level but then at the same time i mean they're building the same kind of stuff we're building over here yeah you know and it's My, just so cool it's yeah. so cool to have those conversations with them and sit down and talk about cars and yeah, stuff yeah my friend yeah. kenny dutwiler builds engines for some customers over yeah. there and they're trying to make i mean make more power i want they more power i want fast. more power they yeah. love to yeah. <laughs> that yeah. is a big thing yeah so totally. it's, it's it, so it is it's the connection regardless totally. it might be a different car but yeah. so i had an experience with a, a i did this event a long time ago called the triathlon of motorsports before they built the speedway in vegas and it was a triathlon thing it was a drag race a half a eighth or a three eighths mile oval paved oval and then a 1.6 mile road course and you okay. added up so it was it was kind of like a tri oh, you know, it was yeah. a triathlon yeah and the deal was you just added up the, the quickest times of each of each lap and then okay. that was a winner and they had different classes and stuff and um so i got it you know so i'm not a sports car person you know i'm okay. more domestic chevrolets all that kind of stuff and uh so the guy pitted next to me was in a um um, uh, Citroen. Okay. You know, a uh, little aardvark looking car, yeah. front wheel drive, right. yeah. four cylinder, you know, it made maybe 80 horsepower, something sure. like that. I'm making fun of him. And, <laughs> I and think my uh, friend had one I mean, of those I'm in, in this, high school. <laughs> yeah. And I'm in this big hulking 65 Chevelle, right. With big fat tires on it right. and, and was running nitrous on a road course to try oh. and make up for the fact that I, my suspension was not very good. And I'm, I was making fun of him. Right. You know, and he's taking it. He's an SCCA racer till we get out on the road course. And he kicked my ass. <laughs> so, I come back in. I was right behind him for four laps. I could not. I could, you know, just goes I'm to show you it's the driver, huh? Yeah. <laughs> no. Right down the straightaway. And as soon as we got this, the corners, he would just drive away from me. Oh and it, was, it was embarrassing. It's a humbling experience. Yeah, it was very humbling. I came back in. And he goes. So what do you think of my little aardvark car now? <laughs> um, not bad. <laughs> it's pretty good. I need to figure out how to make this thing turn corners. So it was a very enlightening experience. Yeah, okay. yeah. So, so again, disparate <laughs> types of things. You can teach me a lot. So it's like, you know, Absolutely. and, and his, his lesson was very simple. It's like my entire car weighs less than half mm, of the front, the front end it, of your car. Got it. Right. It only weighs about 1,800 pounds. You, how much does this weigh? About 3,600. He said, what's your weight distribution? I bought about 60, 40. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he goes, yeah, my car weighs less than the front half of your car. <laughs> Unbelievable. So you have a problem. <laughs> you have a problem. Yeah. So interesting stuff. Yes. 
So Optima, you run the Optima event now occasionally? I, I have. I have actually, um, when COVID hit, I retired my car okay. to actually be painted and remodeled. Ah, and so now she, it's a pretty car. Yeah, well, she's pretty <laughs> sexy. <laughs> she's pretty sexy. But I haven't had a chance to get back into the Optima races. Mm -hmm. I'm currently doing a lot of NMCA and representing McLeod Clutches. Oh, okay. Excuse me, McLeod Racing. McLeod Racing. Yes, McLeod Racing <laughs> and Bear Break. So, uh -huh. oh, yeah. Having a good time. Good doing so, so you work with Will Beatty then? I at do. McLeod. Yeah, he's I a good do. friend. He's a good oh friend. Oh, my goodness. Will Beatty is a very good friend. I think friend. Will yeah. gets around. Yeah. yeah. Will, <laughs> Will does. He always makes he'll, his presence. He'll, he'll yeah. take that, he, he'll he, take that as a compliment. Yeah. 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 He, yeah. He makes his presence. Yeah. yeah. So I've been doing a lot of that. Excellent. And this is uh, Scarlet is the name of the car. Okay. It is her first season back um, on the track. Okay. So, uh, you know, we're doing a lot of repping for K&N as well. And yeah. so and, the car's and I, out and about. And I think a lot of people don't realize how difficult that really uh, optimal event really is. That road course. Oh, boy. On yeah. a 64 <laughs> Corvette, doesn't matter how much you try to apply any type of external downforce, that car still wants to lift oh, yeah. at 145 it, miles an yep, hour. Yep. In, uh, Back in the 60s, the uh -uh. funny cars would all do this. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Because and it's a wing. It's yeah. It's essentially a wing. Yeah. yeah and, and it gets aerodynamically, you got to have air gets under there. Under and the front end, and the and front that end balance comes up. in the back, and you're yep. just. And, and all your traction goes away. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Well, so your front end starts quarter, to quarter float, and you're yeah. like, whoop. Yeah. Yeah. And understeer <laughs> city, which yeah. is yeah. frightening. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. And that's a big challenge because, you know, my experience is is that if you're good at autocross racing, you're somehow it's challenged in the, in the road course part of it, the high speed stuff or the other way around. Cause I've, I've raced against road racers on autocross and they're lost. They don't know, they don't know right. what to do, but then exactly. You, yeah. And so it's because it's a, it's a different experience. driving. So it's very, very difficult to do both really well. And I'm sure there are lots of people who can, I just personally yeah. am challenged with the road course part of it, probably because it's like, we we're talking about Indy, Cam and I were talking about Indy on the way out here today uh, to our undisclosed location. And, <laughs> and, uh, and watching qualifying Fast Friday, and how oh, those guys, right? the back, the, the they were, the they gave them, they gave them, you know, it was crazy. <laughs> and going into turn one at what, 243, Ooh. and standing on this thing like this. Oh, and man. it was like, oh man, you know, <laughs> and, and just, I can and feel just that. <laughs> you know, with, with the thing that, well, I have to, you know, because yeah. it's the only way we're going to learn. And, but I might crash big yeah. time <laughs> yeah. because it's just going to, if it pushes, then I'm just going straight in the wall. And yeah, it might be a safer barrier, but the, Oh, man. So it was amazing because they picked yeah. up something like, what was it, 10, 11, 12 miles an hour? Isn't that incredible? From, wow. from Thursday to Friday because they gave them the extra boost. So it's like, yeah. Wow. <laughs> you know, yeah. so there's, yeah, there's. Wolf is right. Yeah, <laughs> man. So, so again, the, the, the disparity of all this stuff, off-road racing, on-road racing, and then, racing, and then connecting yeah. it together. It's racing. Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. totally. Yeah, uh, and being able to. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Being able to kind of do that crossover because we have an off-road truck and and we always threaten about, hey, let's get a ride out. Let's start racing something out there in the desert together. I'm a great navigator. Yeah. I'm an incredible navigator. She can drive. Yeah. I can be some and backup. That, and that takes skill yeah. to be able to sit in the right seat and not be scared to death. You know, it's like, that's, <laughs> oh always, my been my, that's <laughs> always been my thing. It's like, it's, I watched, there I watched. There's too many people that like to get in that no, other seat. No, no absolutely kind of not. You know, yeah. the closest I ever came to that was my friend, John Lingenfelder and I did the, the, oh. the, the race at, um, <laughs> she, I'm like, she knows oh. it. <laughs> uh, Charlie. His well, younger but, brother is one of our clients. Got okay, it. okay. Yeah. Well, okay. I, I went to the yeah. one of the top speed races, the uh, Silver State, with, and okay. I rode right seat with John. We went 206 miles an hour in an 86 Corvette. And, you know, wow. and that was, and I, a lot of people go, why, right? did, why did you do that? Because I could. <laughs> because, because I could. I and, could. and because I trusted him. You yeah, know, I said, look, awesome. he, I know he thing. builds a quality car. We're not yeah. going to die. Yeah. Right. And, uh, you know, we, we didn't actually crash. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but it was a lot of fun. A yeah. lot of fun, you know, so, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so ricey stuff or like navigators in uh, a rally. Yes. Oh, Man. Yes. Yeah. That's like, and that's, that's what I mean. Because that's what I'm. I, I. That's goals for us, right? Yes. Um. The first time that I hopped in a ultra four car with Jesse, I was like, Yeah, I've never like, you know, been in anything that's rolled over or done anything like that. We get on this course and like within the first, you know, 
20 minutes. Boop, we're over. And I'm like, oh, okay. Well, I guess <laughs> I can mark that off my list. Yeah. Yeah, upside <laughs> right? Down. right, right. <laughs> So it was just kind of funny because, you know, yes, things like that happen, you know, <laughs> and, and especially then, in off-roading and stuff like that, you yeah. know, your center of gravity is a little bit different oh, than, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, it's measured in feet <laughs> right, right yeah. off the ground. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah so that's quite different too. But, um, you know, our family, we grew up around, you know, the desert. It's, it, you, we talked about that a little earlier. It's like, it's like, I've just been around, you know, the desert and race racing and off-roading and and motorcycles yeah. and just behind the wheel all the time yeah. you know but, but it, it wasn't was your, like a certain was, age it was like always <laughs> yeah and it, but it was your choice right no, i mean totally. it's not your family said you must do this this no, was more like do you, you want to be involved oh totally and and yeah i mean they were just always going out and doing these things and that's just what my sister and i love to do too you know we always wanted to work on the cars with our parents and be in the garage and and go you know ride the motorcycles with them and you know and so it, it was just being there and around it. I mean, we loved doing things with them. So, yeah, yeah. it's just, yeah. It, we were just around it all the time, really. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and and you, we then, therefore, you had the opportunity to yeah. learn all this stuff, too. Yeah. And that's probably, and so the, that's kind of what your connection shop, is. And it's funny because we're both, yeah, our parents had an auto body shop, too. So we both understand all of, all of that side of it, you know, with, with her and Greg having that, too. So, mm -hmm. um yeah, just growing up around it, I just loved being around cars and working on them and, and customizing them. So for me, it's more of like the design and paint aspect of it. You know, okay. I, I like I like to build them. I like to have them function the way they need to, but they have to look good too. Right, right. <laughs> That's a big part of sure. it. <laughs> so speaking of that, you guys have your 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 family business has built yes. several SEMA build cars. Yes. And at one year, you did how many? Twelve. We. Uh, well, we probably built 12. We, we've had 23 at the show that we could say that we worked on at one time. <laughs> yeah. I know a lot, a lot of people can actually say things like that. I mean, no. and, and, you know, maybe like 10 to 12 of them were like more of the full builds, like, you know, everything from, from the suspension to the body and paint and interior and stuff. And then the other ones were like, oh, we did a lift kit and wheels and tires, or we did some custom paint on it. So they were things that, that, you know, came into our shop and were touched at all of those things. And then, and then a lot of the vehicles that we've done have just gone back multiple times too. So right, right. if we were, we'd, we'd be like walking the show and be like, Oh yeah, there's one we've done before. <laughs> there's one we've done, you know, um, uh, Detroit locker. I think they, that one was like always there for like 10 years. It was uh -huh. always there, but, uh, yeah, I mean, that part has been great. Um, you know, when I was 16, that was like, you know, well, back in the day, I think anyone can go to the SEMA show now. I mean, they're not supposed to, but I feel like I can see kids walking around. Yes. But I was, you know, at 16, I was able to go at to the, the show. show. And back, I, back I when, like, when you right, had to have a connection to get in. Could, exactly. Right. So it's like going there for the first time, literally for me was like, this is what I want to do. I just, I knew it. I was like, I don't know how or why or what. And I really, at that time, like, yeah, I was like, you know, sanding cars for my dad and things like that, you know? Yeah, which it is, was any, nothing glamorous, you right, know? Right, right. But it's you're paying your dues, too. You have sure, to pay your dues, right? Sure, yeah. But then, um, you know, eventually it was like, you know, uh, we started working on SEMA things and, and I don't know, it just gained momentum, you know, from there. But, you know, because I don't think I really started working on anything until I was probably about 25 or so until I really started working on things like that. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we'd like to thank our friends at AllInAmerican.com. They make some fantastic suspension pieces, coilover shock conversions. We put one on my Chevelle. Outstanding little piece of, of operation. I just did a and, story uh, on an El Camino. And on El Camino, El that's Camino. right. And it's in running uh, hot rod. Look at and, that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, and then I, I think there is, there's a little promo there's for... There's a promo code, CARGUY10. So when you're online, put in CARGUY10 and you will get... 10% off. Look at that. Well, that's awesome. not bad. And we don't expect Absolutely. you to send any part of that back to us. No. So I think Shh, I think you, we what? should really, really push that, right? You know, Absolutely. So you're on your like own. some. You're on your that's own. Right. So thanks again to AldenAmerican.com and uh, check them out. So we'd like to thank our sponsor, ARP and ARP-Bolts.com. And uh, I mean, we all three build cars. We all work yeah. on this stuff. Yep. And I, I mean, tinker. You tinker. I we, tinker. Yes, we all build. Yeah, and, and you know what? It's, it's kind of a, a really cool multiple purpose fastener for me because there's all the science and all the technology which is 
bottomless. Trust me. Unbelievable amount of research that they put into these sure, things. Absolutely. And on top of it, you get them out of the, the package, and they're absolutely beautiful, which I've joked before. It's like jewelry for your right. car. And when pre-oil. We're building yeah. a, when we're, yeah, and when we're building a high-end car, it, there isn't anything else going on. It. I need, it's part of the criteria for right. me to have them lining the engine bay, not just on the engine, everywhere. Yeah. So right. you get all the strength, the durability, the reliability, and fantastic good looks. Right. Sure. Kind of like Jeff here. And without, yeah. and without peer. <laughs> without peer. With, and else you know what? Or pairs. With, with, without peer. There's, no, there's nobody else Correct. that does that what is, do. It is. So check them out at arp-bolts.com, and they can help you out. That's, That's about great. when I started learning how to work on a car and yeah. do some Bondo and color sand and actually buff something out. And right. I do the grunt work, though. And you got to do everything, I don't do though. The desi- I'm See, not the designer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm kind of creative, but when it comes to that, I just back off and, you know, let somebody like, like <laughs> Teresa or Greg do something like that. Right. Nice. Right. Yeah, right. I can do nice. some grunt work, though. <laughs> hey, hey, there's hey. always extra how, room for that. How yeah. about you wet <laughs> sand that over there? Yeah. <laughs> we all yeah. know that's the glamorous <laughs> life. Because that, and, and, and that, unfortunately, is that's, you know, like I said, paying the dues. It is. is yeah. You have there's to know a lot how to of do it. that, and you yep. got to be willing to do it you know not not everybody can be the hero all the time right right yeah Yeah, but i think that that's super important though and it's something that i learned within just the last five years about how to change the oil on my car to you know work on my own brakes and to work on the engine and change a clutch and just i mean i feel very empowered by doing that greasy yeah. work well yeah. plus there's there's a, there's a s- sense of accomplishment too yep you know definitely yeah yes. i've got a, i've got an engine i'm putting together right now that i'm kind of i'm you know I'm, it's all done all i gotta go back and fire it when i get home so it's nice. like i'm all motivated it's the best part and hopefully, yeah. it, doesn't, hopefully it doesn't go Everything. clank you know <laughs> that would be bad back so, to the drawing board then huh <laughs> yeah so <laughs> which is always a possibility oh it is yeah, it yeah, is yeah <laughs> so what's in the future for you guys so we launched. Well, you had so, your, well, we should talk about the pod. We just kind of touched on the podcast. So yeah. you guys have done like five, four, five, something like that. No, I think. no, yeah, four. no, four. You got four. four, four, four. We've only done four. four. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. yeah. We, so what's the name of the podcast? So we can get it I'll out to let, our I'll friends. I'll let hers. We can kind of go back on the podcast yeah. and explain where it even. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that might be a little bit more yeah. interesting. I started a blog when I started racing because mm-hmm. I found that. Um, I had to learn how to communicate with Greg with regards to what the car was doing. When sure. I decided that I didn't want to run all run over all the cones, right? I thought that, <laughs> it's always <laughs> like, a good idea. Oh shit! <laughs> always a good you idea. Gotta, you got to find the brake, and you got to find the gas pedal, and you got to find the track. And then here's what the car's doing. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. one of the things that I noticed was that because at the time when I started racing, I was 49 years old. I needed to learn how to breathe at the starting (laughs) line. And and so I found out through taking yoga uh, that it was really fascinating for other women to kind of understand what I was doing. And so I started a blog and kind of charted uh, and journaled how I was growing within communication with my husband, with, you know, having some grace where I was concerned Mm -hmm. and how I was evolving and not being frustrated when something didn't work out and then learning about the car. And I found that the blog was an incredible release for me to kind of share my story. And I really felt like I wasn't really the best at blogging. (laughs) It just wasn't nearly (laughs) consistent (laughs) enough. And I had put together this idea and knew that it would come to fruition and the blog was called writing shotgun TV. Okay. And so within the last year I got to thinking I'm going to turn this into, you know, a podcast because I, I Dang it, I have a lot to I say. I was going to say, I mean, and we've been talking about it for <laughs> yeah. a while now, yeah. too. It's been something yeah. that's been, it's been there. Building. Yes, yes. And then one morning I remember calling Teresa <laughs> and saying, I have a really crazy idea. <laughs> And that's how it started. And we talked I never and think any ideas are crazy. Well, that was the thing. That was she, I was very, obviously, very persistent and manipulative, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> but well, no. sometimes but, you have to be to get your ideas oh, across, absolutely. right? Yeah. 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 And so that's when we started putting together our little grassroots podcast. And, you know, 
decided that we we didn't need to be perfect at anything and we would no. just wing it <laughs> with a format folks with a format but well you know. even when you say wing it obviously you have all of this background like you said in in journalism writing and, and writing yeah. she she's already great at all of that stuff so uh, me i just like to talk so i was like totally i mean i'm on board so the podcast well, works yeah you know, totally the i thing. can do that I, I started last year before we started the podcast i started an instagram live series and my my goal was just well, basically, is our, our catchphrase is, how'd you become such a badass? And I want to know. Okay. And, okay. and that's, that's cool. really yeah. where that's cool. that came yeah. from. Because that's an interesting... Teresa, Teresa was my first interview <laughs> on the Instagram Live series, and we had a ball. Yeah. And so there was obviously a connection there. Absolutely. And yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Because yeah. So that's so much of it. It's, a, it's about energy, right? Yeah. And, right. And a connection. It's like, and and even though it's, it's not something you can put your finger on and right. say, this no. is what it is. Right. It, it nevertheless is there. Yep. Yeah. 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 Oh, and it's cool. not, and it's not always a, a likely pairing. Yeah. So it just, by being able to cover, you know, two ends of the spectrum, that just, I think that's what makes it so much fun. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, she's a Ford girl. I'm a Chevy girl. <laughs> <laughs> right? So, so I'm sure there are a few conversations about that, too. That's sitting at opposite ends <laughs> of the but, table. But the, <laughs> but the reality is, is we're still American muscle. Right. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Totally. And, yeah, and even, beyond, even beyond that, it's, it's, it's automotive. Yeah. Because oh, I, I, oh, yeah. I read somewhere, somebody did a, a little column, and it was really interesting. It was about... Uh, it was about ladders, and so from the standpoint that that old guys tend to go, well, I don't want anything to do with you because mm. you do a car that I think is not cool. Sure, okay. And the reality is, you know, especially as older people, it's like, no, what we should be doing the exact opposite, but saying, hey, you know, I might not be interested in your Volkswagen or your Porsche. Right. Or or your Citroen, but <laughs> nevertheless, Easy for you to say. yeah. <laughs> uh, but but nevertheless, you're you're playing with cars. Yeah. And now, especially yes. with this, let's just call it what it is—an attack on internal combustion engines and right? stuff that we we hold very dear to <laughs> yes. our hearts. That it's yes. like you should no longer be an exclusive club, yeah. but rather an all-embracing oh. club to say. Right. And, and even to the electric car guys, as long yeah. as you don't say, because the concept to me has always, it, it seems like from what you get from the outside coming in is it's, it's all or nothing. Yeah. It's, yeah. It either has to be all electric, which of course is a fallacy, or, or not. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be. But we could even say as the car community, still make it all encompassing. We, we've done podcasts on electric cars and yeah. and they are very cool and they're ridiculously they fast, fast. Oh, yeah. boy. you know it's I okay just miss the sound yes it's yeah, it's sure. as, as a friend of mine said it has no soul yeah right you, you need right. that rumble like an older car you drive an older right. car you feel it right. when you're going down yes. the road but, but you know? part of that is because we grew up with that right yes. so if you so if you were coming in first with yeah. an electric car you don't miss it you don't miss it because you it, it wasn't you know it wasn't yeah. in your Boy. mother's milk so therefore yeah. it's not there those yeah. so, poor people <laughs> they, you know, they don't know what they're missing they do they totally. no idea so so and the smell to a certain extent oh, it's yeah, not though, it's yeah. not burnt electrons anymore so so there's this whole visceral thing that they are missing out on Yes. But but from an yes. acceleration standpoint, oh boy! Oh yeah, know, no, it's yeah. impressive, right. fun stuff. <laughs> yeah. So um, you know, so I, the the concept being, like what you guys you yeah. guys are doing, yeah. all encompassing. Say, look, you know, a rising tide floats all boats. Let's let's bring you along. Yeah. Because yeah. because we need to do this all together. Yep. And and all about say, community and and building. Yeah, that. it's okay. I love that. Yeah. As long as you're involved and you know yeah. and you don't put anybody else down because they do something different. Right. It Absolutely. was so cool like about that. so cool about what Mr. Peterson did way back in the beginning when they defined hot rods. They mm -hmm. didn't make it. You have to build a 32 Ford or you have to build a yeah. Roadster. There were actually car clubs in in Southern California that excluded anybody that didn't have a Roadster. Yeah. Which seems insane <laughs> yeah, now, but back then it was like chickens are for coops. Yeah. You know, that was the thing. Yeah. And, and it was like, uh, who cares? But yeah. To, yeah. to certain people, but that was exclusive where yeah. it should right. not have been. Yeah. And, but when he wrote the definition of a hot rod, it was very generic. And it was, it was basically what it said was build what you like. Yes. Yeah. Build what you like. Yeah. And if you like it, then that's cool. And we'll yeah. embrace it. What's wrong with that? Yeah. And we'll race it. Yeah. yeah. No, and, and then I, we'll go race. Right. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. And if I beat you, 
that you need to go home and figure and, out and, how and, to go. And none of us want to win by default or a no, break no, or, or something or, like that. Or or a I want to or beat a yellow you, or, or right? a yellow a yellow <laughs> flag <laughs> win. We don't want to win on a yellow I'm flag. Beat you. Yeah, yeah, which was why Indy was so cool, you know. Yeah. And uh, because they didn't they didn't end it on a yellow flag when they could have, and it mm, made yeah. it far more interesting mm. because of that. So yeah, yeah. exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And, if, and if you beat me, then I'll just go home and figure out how to go faster. Right. right. And right. we'll yeah. just keep that whole chain yep. going. Yep. yep. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. No, and I yeah. love that you bring that being inclusive and not exclusive because it's definitely even even when we started real deal revolution it was like oh we're doing female empowerment so we want to bring women to the table and and teach women and that's kind of how that started but as we started to do it jesse and i would go to these events and like kids came up guys came up everyone we don't we didn't want to turn them away we were like cool come on over sure so we were teaching everyone so then we kind of changed that concept into the all the instructors were women Mm -hmm. because there's just a different way that they teach in in the have a different way about themselves that that is again all inclusive of that right Mm -hmm. that that different nature about us them you know in general about women um and and we did we wanted it to be inclusive we wanted everyone we wanted to we teach five-year-olds how to weld you know really oh yeah you get that because if you're still putting all these things on them they want to learn all of those things and they will listen to you they will know exactly what you want to tell okay this is what i need to do they listen so well look at them on on what ipads and all of these things now they use them better than us half the time right right, you know you can see a two or three year old using them you're like how how do they know how to do that better than i do i hadn't really thought of it before but i'm not a welder at all but i'm thinking teach my granddaughter how to weld. totally yeah you know it's you know and 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 like you said and so it's taking this intimidation factor out it's just being there for them it's the opportunity it's all these little things like that machines are here yeah let's let's play together and figure it out and because i have this vision in my head um you know that that when she's 16 years old yeah she rolls into high school in one of my hot rods nice right with a four speed <laughs> that that the rest of the kids love may it. not even know what it is yeah, right i love you that. know but it's like you know now I, whether that really happens or not because it has to be her she has to decide to want to do that yeah of course you know, because of i can't course. i can't force it on yeah, her yeah. but at the same time it's like and it's and it's but it's, being around you're giving her all the opportunity yes. if she wants to be around it you're like hey yeah. this is cool like hey yeah. you know is there anything you want to do like this you're right. you're you're putting that out there right. you know and that's right. exactly what we want to do by by our podcast sure by real deal all of those things you just got to put them out in the world and and you had mentioned that too, community. Community is so big to me because we we just all want to keep expanding that. The car community, all, all of these different things so that everyone feels like it's something they can come into, mm-hmm. you know, and they have that opportunity to, not that it's this exclusive club right, that, right. No, that everyone's too good for everyone else. And, and, and that's not and the case. so many times you show up as a newbie into whatever it's going to yeah. be. And if you have a negative experience, right? Then you think everyone's like that. Then you, yeah, they're they're all assholes, yep. and you don't yeah. realize that. No, yep. you just unfortunately pick the, the worst r- guy, know, the wrong you know, one, the wrong guy to talk to, or the, or woman, yeah. but but the wrong yeah. person. Let's put it that yeah. way. Um, uh, to associate with, and you yeah. got this whole different impression of what's really going on here. When right. in fact, that's not what's going on here yeah. at all. Yeah. So yeah, you know, no, or you go totally. to a car show, and unless you drive a Porsche, uh, you know, I'm I'm sorry. You know, I can't talk to you. Yeah. You know, that kind of thing. Yeah. Not to pick on Porsche people, but <laughs> <laughs> not that I ever had a negative experience with a Porsche person. I never have, actually. So uh, but just what popped into my head. But, you know, yeah. I could pick on Citroens again. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I suppose there may be two or three Citroen people out there. So, think- look, this, we could do this for another hour. <laughs> Then, you know, we Has may we may have to do this again. I, I have to admit, I had never met either one of you before, and it was a little bit of trepidation. I told my wife coming here, and it's like I don't know how this is going to work. You know, but Got a I, woman but I did, on both sides of me. I, I don't know I, what to do. I did listen to your 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 podcast, and it was like, okay, there's energy there, man. It's like I had to actually turn the volume down a little bit. It was like I'm going to wake her up. So it That's was great. usually me. It was great. So so. We could do this for another hour. Maybe we'll do this again because there's because we didn't talk at all about uh, SEMA. I know, huh? Catastrophes, there's so right? many things. Because there are, oh, are, there are hundreds of stories, right? So many stories. So, um, 
So we will do this again. Uh, <laughs> thanks for coming along. I want to ha- thank our friends at arp-bolts.com to make sure that you, you get that because they help us out with this whole thing. And uh, we'll see you soon. Yay. Thank thanks you. Thanks for having us.